Guess what day it is? It's hump day. Well, actually, it might not be hump day, depending on when you're watching this. But when I made it, it was hump day. It was Wednesday. So, either way, um, welcome. And here's your video for section 2.6a. So I broke this one up into two parts, um, like I have in previous ones. So, first of all, why don't you write down the goal? Our goal for this section is to prove and apply theorems about angles. That's our goal for section 2.6. I can prove and apply theorems about angles. And don't, don't forget to write down your goals um, on a daily basis and self-assess yourself afterwards so you can see what you know, what you don't know, uh, maybe what you need to maybe ask questions about. But we're going to go through this. We're going to make this a short video, hopefully. And then you'll get to the second part either in another video or in class. So um, we ta started talking about segment proofs. And we taught when we first started talking about proofs last section, this is one of the proofs we did. And just a, just a reminder to you that all these are all the statements that you make. And again, statements can be made based on um, the given statements based on what you see in the picture or what you can use from that based on certain properties. And that's where you put over here on the right um, is your, uh, oh, I didn't mean to write given. Can't talk and think, or write and think at the same time. These are where your reasons are. So when you're proving things, really when you're trying to make any kind of argument, and that's what a proof is, you need to have valid reasons for what you're saying. So your reasons here could be things like um, we've talked about different properties, we've talked about definitions, we've talked about some postulates, and today we're going to add in some theorems. So we'll talk about what theorems are. But your reasons will go on the, over to the right, and that's called a two-column proof. That's your most common type of proof. It's probably the easiest one, the one that you'll use the most this year. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually just define what a theorem is. And if you look in your textbook or most places, um, the definition for a theorem is pretty similar. It's a conjecture or statement that you can prove. So it is a conjecture. Or statement that you can prove. You might, you, it, you might, um, you might uh, think this similar to what a postulate is, only a postulate is a conjecture or statement that you don't have to prove, that is just um, assumed to be true and accepted as true. Whereas a theorem is something that's already been proved, proven true, or something that we will prove true, and then that you can use for reasoning for other things as well. So some of these theorems that I'll give you, you can just use and, and trust that they're, they're, they're already proven because they are a theorem. Um, sometimes we'll practice proving them as well. So um, the first theorem that I want to show you, and this, this definitely is one of the most commonly used ones, especially among angle proofs, is that vertical angles are congruent. So you first got to remember what a vertical angle are. Vertical angles are. So vertical angles would be angle 1 and angle 3. They're opposites, and their opposite rays go like this. So really, they're like opposite angles. But those are always going to be congruent if they're truly vertical angles. So you can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And then same thing over here. 2 and 4, angle 2 will be congruent to angle 4. All, all the time, vertical angles are congruent. Um, now, I have two examples here just to use that a little bit. We're going to do a little bit more with that in just a sec. But let's use this theorem. So the first one I'll do, uh, well, we're going to solve for x. And I think the first one we really have to use is that vertical angle theorem. The second one, not so much. You'll see there. But for the first one, if we know that the vertical angles are congruent, then this angle, and this is how you remember, this is how you, you can do either, two, you can do two loops for these two. But showing that they're congruent, um, we use the arcs. So we're going to say that this, this is congruent to this angle. So that means that their angle measures whoops, are also congruent. All right, so 16x minus 20 
is going to be equal to 13x plus 7. Just by that theorem, we know that the angles are congruent, so their measures are equal. And now we can solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 13x from both sides. And end up with the 3x minus 20 equals 7 over here. Now I'm going to add 20 to both sides. Get the variable term all alone. And I end up with this cancels out. We just have 3x equals 27. Last step, I'll divide both sides by 3. Cancel out those, and then we just have x equals 9. So we solve for x in that one using that theorem directly from what we said. Number, number 2 is not quite as similar because it's not just using the vertical angle theorem. I'm not sure why this one's in here. Um, but We'll set it up at least here. If you look at 7x and 10, what type of angles are those? Or what do they make? Well, they make a linear pair. Meaning that they are, whoops, they are adjacent, or they're right next to each other. Um, they share one straight, this straight angle would be part of both of them, and they also share the common side there. So they add up, that means they're also supplementary. So 7x plus 10 plus 3x will be as equal to a total of 180. And I think you can solve for x from there. I'll do it really quick without explaining my work. But hopefully you can tell what I'm doing here. Why does it do that? And I apologize that my work doesn't always look the neatest. But it is what it is. All right, so I got 17 for that one. All right, we are going to now go through two other examples. Well, I guess I just want to say, name two pairs of congruent angles in each figure and justify your reasoning. So justifying, I would say this angle is congruent to this angle. So this would be angle, and just to practice our angle notation, W, Q, y and it has to go in order like that you can't just pick a, a, a random way to put the to label those angles that would be congruent to um let's say xqz angle xqz and my justification also i could say that this angle you can use two loops or sometimes you'll see um, like uh, a, an arc with a line in it. That's another way to mark that they're separate, but they're also congruent. So these double loops would be angle WQZ is congruent to angle um, XQY. Stop it. Those would be because they are vertical angles. Both of those because of the vertical angle theorem. Oops. A lot of times you'll see theorem is um, shortened to THM. All right, I'm not going to write out the angles for this one, but I'm going to show you. I could say that, well, it looks like we have, we could say that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here because there's already those arcs there. There's one pair. We could say that, oh, it's also, then these are all congruent too, because if this is congruent to this, this is congruent to this, this is also congruent to this. There's a lot of pairs of congruent angles there too. Those are all congruent. And then we could also say that this is congruent to this. We could say the same thing with these right here. That is a lot of congruent angles, and that's just getting used to the fact that you're going to see lots of different ways that you can find congruent angles and use congruent angles. Um, when we're proving things, okay, and solving things. Uh, now, the last part I wanted to do is just add some more theorems to your list of theorems. So these are some theorems that we may or may not prove, um, but it says if this first one, so we'll say this vertical angle theorem was our first one, so this is our second one. If two angles are supplements of the same angle or of congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. So if 
Angle one and angle two are supplementary. That means they add up to 180. And two and three add up to 180. Then we can say that um, those two angles, so angle one is congruent to angle three. And we can tell from the picture that those are also vertical angles, but we might have a different situation where they wouldn't have that in there. So that'll work. Our next one would be our third one that we have so far. It says if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. Very similar. But let's say if angle one and angle two are complementary, and they, they form a right angle, angle two and angle three also form a right angle, then we can say that angle one is congruent to angle three as well. All right, I've got two more down here. Just and there's no picture or given or conclusion. It just says all right angles are congruent. Hopefully you you kind of understand that one by now. They're all going to be equal to 90 degrees, so they're all congruent. And then if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then each is a right angle. Okay, that's our fifth one. So we've got five different theorems now, five different theorems that we can use and that we will use. And these are all dealing with angles. So let's just use a couple of them here. So it says let's talk about angles. Find the measure of each angle based on what you're given. So it's angle A is three times as large as its complement. So its complement would add up to 90 degrees. Um, we can say that, we'll just say that, make this an algebraic equation. Let's just say that that's A is three times B. And we know that A plus B equals 90 degrees. Now, if you think back, you can you can set up a system of equations here because we have two different formulas. But we can just plug in. So there's different ways to think about this. You could think about it and say, well, I can guess that maybe it's 20, and then we'd have three times that would be 60. That would get you 80. And that's not quite it. Um, so maybe 22 degrees. Oh, sorry. But I know that A is, is going to be three times B. So I'm going to plug in A times A. So I'm going to plug in this in for A over here. So then I have 3B plus B equals 90. So that would be 4B equals 90. And I just have to divide 90 by 4. And sure enough, I think I get 22 and a half, actually. But that would be twice. Twice. And two fourths, so that'd be 22 and a half degrees. Would be for a measure of angle B. And then that leaves what? 57 and a half degrees? Oops, 0.5 degrees for angle A. All right, using some algebra, you got to use some algebra here to solve for some things, but we also have to know what these things mean. So angle A is 21 less than the twice the size, uh, than twice as large as its supplement. So we'll just represent A for angle A is equal to 21 less than, no, hold on. So we're going to take 21 less than twice of its supplement. Oops, equals 2b minus 21, and we know that a plus b is 180 this time, so we can plug this in for a. So if we have 2b minus 21 plus b equals 180, we have 3b, we can subtract or add 21 to both sides right away, equals 201. Divide that by 3, and you end up getting b equals, well, is it 67? I think it's 67. We'll go with 67. 67 degrees. And then we can also figure out that a would be. Whatever 180 minus that would be. So we can do 180, that would be 
90 plus 23 would be 113. Degrees. Okay. So my task for you for by the time we come to class next time would be to get number three and number four completed. Do your best um, to solve for those. And we'll see you next time.